today, guys. Got our kit in from Turbo Dynamics, and uh, we're gonna be installing today. So stay tuned. So here's our kit. Just got it in from Turbo Dynamics. Open it up. Make sure everything's here. Well, that was good. We got a Dalton weight kit for the clutch. We got the selector knob for the different stages. Anti-lag button. Also got the knock light. And finally, let's get this thing out of here. We have a remapped ECU. So we'll take it stage by stage and uh, install it accordingly. For starters, let's get this ECU back in here and install. Next step's gonna be installing this knock light. I think we're gonna put it right here. Be able to see it pretty well. Um, works well with the bracket I made for the GPS mount, a Garmin Montana. So we'll be able to just bolt it on right there. And unplug it. So when we gotta take the hood off through the oil, good to go. Mounting brackets installed. That's gonna go right about here. I need the other piece, there we go. Boom, right in front of the driver, good to go. Next step is going to be installing the switch. <clears throat> I was going to install it on the hood, but I think that's going to be a real pain when it comes to unplugging this to take the hood off to do oil change. It would have been nice up there because you don't get snow, but fortunately I think the only good place is going to be probably right about here. So. We'll get at that, drill a hole, put it in, make sure we have clearance because we got some depth going on here, but we can bend it a little bit. So we'll take a look. Got the hole drilled, but there's also on this little switch, there's a deep, like a pen to hold it lined up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole right next to it so this thing never will spin underneath. So now that our switch is installed, now we gotta connect these two pins to this port. So we're gonna start, take off the two white pins. You can see if you look at this closely, it's labeled 28, and then you got 29 and 30. Those are the two numbers you want. I push this white tab in to release the pins. And now I gotta pull out these white plugs. We got one. And we'll get the other one out of here. All right, we're out. So it looks like red has got to go into 30, and white's got to go into 29. It looks like some of these kits come with different colors, I guess depending on the year, but mine's recent, so we're talking red and white here. So we've got red is 30, and white is 29. Somebody did recommend some dielectric grease, so maybe I'll get some of that. Got some dielectric grease, put a little bit on these guys. We go. Alright, we're all in. Okay, yeah, we're good. Just gotta plug it in and uh, go to the next step. We're on to the next step here. Um, we gotta put the anti leg button in. Seems like most guys put it over here. Um, but it looks like you gotta take the whole switch apart. So we're gonna give this a whirl and we're gonna see how it uh, turns out. Might be buying a new switch. I don't know. We'll see. It's actually pretty easy. This is uh, my, I have an XF1100 Turbo 2013. So for starters, you just gotta pop these two tabs out, and instead of taking all the screws out, it's this screw and that screw, and the whole assembly comes out like that. Pretty simple. So now we'll drill a hole, and uh, we'll go from there. So we got the button all in. Put some uh, electrical, whatever that stuff's called, on it, <clears throat> instead of a uh, electrical tape. Now if you take this part and you flip it over like I did, uh, everything goes everywhere. So there are some pieces in here for the high beam. So the first thing you're gonna put in is a spring. So that goes in. Okay. What you can do is, well, what I'm gonna do is put the spring in this hat first. The teeth on this face down. If you hold this up, it makes it a little bit easier to put in. Look at 
this guy in. Oh, come on. Got big nubby fingers over here. This doesn't make this easy. But we'll give it a whirl. Come on, go in there. Go. Oh, you son of a. Let me just show you the orientation. Spring. Spring goes in this piece, white piece, teeth face down. Then this piece with the copper bus bar, or whatever you want to call that, will face out towards the circuit board. And then finally, we're going to put on this big spring. Got the switch in. A little bit of a pain. Um, so it's in there. We're good to go. This still works. I checked it. Got all the wiring tucked up. I just did some zip ties and whatnot. Uh, no need to film that. All right, so now we're up to got to connect this wire from the uh, anti like switch to the one wire here. So let's get on that. All right, that's done. Got to cool off and we'll heat shrink it. And it looks like the final thing we got to do is we got to find a spot for this ground. And uh, other than that, I think we're pretty much done. And that's that's really it. Yeah. Plug this back in, and we just gotta hook up the button, the uh, what do you call it, knock light to that. But I'm not gonna zip tie all that in because when I gotta pull the hood off, change the oil, and I'm gonna be unzip tying it every single time. So we'll see how it works out. We may have to end up zip tying it, but we'll see. We don't know. So I checked out a bunch of spots, and it seems like this has got a really good ground on it, really low resistance. So I think we're gonna go with it right there. Easy to get to, not too much more to zip tie, and that'll be it. Well, we got our own stall zip tied in. And now, let's check and make sure it works right. It's supposed to flash one for eco. There we go, it's one flash. I gotta shut it off again, turn it back on for two flashes. There we go, turn it back off. Turn it back on, should be three flashes. And that's it, nice. What's going on guys? Today we're working on the clutching for the 2013 XF1100 Turbo that we just put the Turbo Dynamics kit on. We have a Dalton kit, uh, an F a 5W, 86.5 to 94 grams. We got our sheet here. Uh, basically we're working with, we're going to put these in empty with no weights in them. We'll start off there and uh, basically add weight until we get to the RPM rev limit that we want to be at, which is uh, 8,300 RPM as per turbo dynamics. So uh, let's get into tearing the clutch down and uh, we'll go from there. Now that we got the turbo dynamics kit basically installed, I figured I'd do a little walkthrough and show everything to you. So here we go. We got the, e the ECU, it's version 25. This is your diagnostic port normally. And what this wire runs up to is it runs up to your knock light. So that's basically a simple plug-in, okay? This guy right here running down, that's the, the four post switch. That gets pinned into this plug right here. There's two pins, 29 and 30. And then we also have this ground wire. This runs the anti-leg button up here and then to the switch. That gets tied into this harness right here, the, the gray guy. All right, and then we'll go up here. We got our anti-leg button which is to that ground and then the other end of this goes to this knob okay so we'll go around basically with the stage three you still have four positions so from my understanding talking to turbo dynamics if you put it in the first stage turn it on basically it's only going to rev up to the uh basically anti-lag so you won't be able to drive it okay now you got your stage two which is your second position, this is gonna be like whatever you pick first, so mine's Eco Trail, and you get two flashes. Then you're gonna go up to the third, which is should be three flashes, okay? And that's gonna be my uh, Power Trail 91, which is, uh, I think, 260 horse. Then finally, the last one is gonna be your four flashes, and that's gonna be my Power Trail 94, uh, here in the States, we only got 93, so I could technically run Octane Boost with it. Or if I'm ever up in Canada, I can run 94. Apparently, that's available at the pumps. And uh, that really buttons it all up. There's really not much more to it. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, basically, keep an eye on the knock light when you're riding. If that starts flashing, you really should let the throttle. But from my understanding, it also uh, 
will pull boost out, also pull timing out. Basically, I saved the motor, see how many issues. The only other thing I did here was the plugs are 20,000 gaps. Stock on this is 36, I believe. And that really, that really buttons everything up here. So here we are, we got our primary clutch. Uh, this already has the floating secondary on it. Apparently it helps with uh, blowing belts. Uh, I haven't had any issues, so it seems to be working pretty well. This is our primary. We got our stock yellow spring, which Turbo Dynamics said is perfectly fine to use with the kit they sent me from Dalton. Here we have each one of these. We got a bolt going through, set screw. Basically gotta take all these bolts off, get this thing apart and unbolt these and switch these guys out. So that's gonna be the next step. I'm just gonna mark this plate to this. I always do it on anything that's round just in case it's balanced. It looks like it does have some balancing in here so we're gonna to wanna to make sure that that goes back together the same exact way. There's gonna be some spring tension in here but if you take it apart slowly should be alright. The only issue is going to be getting it back together. I haven't gotten that far yet. We're going to find out. It doesn't look like there's a ton of preload on the spring. So it should be able to do it by hand. But we don't know until we try. I figure after we get this apart, we'll take this guy, get a parts wash, clean it up. Looks like it's got some corrosion on it over the years. I'm sure it doesn't really affect performance too well, but we'll make sure everything is nice and clean before we put it all back together. Oh boy. Well, she's got some spring pressure in her. Got her all apart. No issues with the spring. We got our plate that we marked. We got our spring. And we got a, looks like we need a special tool, which I might not have. So we might have to revisit this. So here we are, we got a, I got the belt off because I don't have a socket that's deep enough for that. Uh, I did order one because it looks like I want to take this wall apart and clean it up. It's pretty nasty in there. I don't think it's ever been serviced and this sled's got like uh, 10,000 miles on it. So we're going to pull it apart for good measure and clean it up. I mean, right, you see that these weights are pretty rusted to this, uh, this bolt that goes through. So I'm trying to frame up some W40 to get them all apart. Got the clutch weights installed on the Articat the other day. Unfortunately, the GoPro didn't want to cooperate, so I couldn't film the whole thing. But I'll give you a, a look-see. So basically, all you really got to do is take these bolts off. The spring comes out with it. There's a little tension. It's not too hard to do by yourself. Take it out. Get the belt off. You can slide the whole clutch in and get to the weights. So we got the weights installed. Um, I got an idea where to set them up. Uh, so basically what I did was to start off was 91 and a half uh, grams total. They're like 86 and a half to begin with. So you add in whatever. So I added in a half inch, uh, what do you call it, set screw and a three quarter inch set screw. I read online, some guys say to run the heavier weight on the heel side so I did that and didn't put it in all the way it's in right now for the way it is uh, gonna test it out and uh, if it's all good we're gonna red lock tight so everything stays in place if not we'll play around with it uh, not too much snow by us over here yeah. but uh, plan to go up to Old Forge next weekend so I'm hoping there's gonna be some snow to give us a test and uh, we'll go from there uh, aside from that everything's all done buttoned up and uh, I'll give you guys a shot of a thing on anti-lag. We'll get into some mods done here. Nothing really crazy. Uh, we got these roto packs here I put on here for extra fuel because there's always one guy in the group who runs out of fuel. And you know, when it's you know negative 10 degrees out, it's kind of the last thing you want to deal with. So I put one of these on, built a custom bracket, powder coated it, basically just bolts to the side of the tunnel. Nothing crazy. And uh, the only other thing done to this sled that I can think of it's, uh, it's got an exhaust on it. I didn't buy one, I built one. Got a muffler, got stainless tubing, 90 degree bends, welded a bung in, welded all the pipe, plasma cut out a plate in the bottom so it sits in there. 
and plasma cut out a plate uh, for the flange. Other than that, it sounds pretty good. Seems to work pretty well and uh, it's a lot cheaper than buying a, an exhaust. As promised, I said I'll give you guys a shot of this thing running. Here we are, let's we'll start her up. This will be the new exhaust and anti lag, which we'll test in a second. <laughs> TJ's going on the safe side.